that the motion be agreed to. Chair. Uh, Carol Beaumont. Thank you very much, Mr Chair. Um, I rise to speak, uh, to speak in support of the sen Sentencing Aggravating Factors Amendment Bill. We will be supporting this bill through to select committee. Um, but I have to say that I think that uh, the Minister's comments about what this bill is going to achieve are somewhat overstated. But I will come back to that point. Uh, let me start by saying that on the day that we are uh, having the first reading of this bill, I saw in today's uh, Dominion Post a story about... Uh, the headline says, Bashed Policeman Says Motorist Saved His Life. And this is the story of Highway Patrol Officer Steve McLarty of Turangi, who was bashed unconscious, received multiple punches. Uh, he was arresting a man who gave false information after a failed breath test. And this was less than five months after Waiuru Officer Bruce Mellor was beaten with a machete near Taihapi. So none of us in this house, house, despite what Mr Paul Quinn was saying, none of us in this house would um, condone that sort of behaviour. And we do find it offensive that those people who are serving us and looking after our interests and trying to uphold law and order in this country, be they police officers or um, prison officers should be treated in that way. So we're all concerned about these sorts of gratuitous attacks on our police officers. And I did think it was interesting that on the day we were debating this, there was such a story, of course, in our paper. And it's not uncommon. So the bill would make the fact that an offence was committed against a police officer or prison officer acting in the course of his or her duty, a listed mandatory aggravating, aggravating factor at sentencing. Now, as I've said, we agree that assaults on police and prison officers should be taken very seriously, and we have no problem supporting this bill. However, we do not think it will make any difference as the courts can, and already usually do, take into consideration this is an aggravating factor in sentencing. And this is where I think the Minister is somewhat overstating what this bill is likely to achieve. And I do want to note um, that our public servants and state servants, people like police and prison officers, but others as well, do a very difficult job often in very trying circumstances with people who are often um, angry, under the influence of drug and alcohol, are feeling disenfranchised, whatever the reason, are just plain bad, feeling just plain angry. Police, prison officers, but not just those jobs, nurses, doctors in our emergency departments, teachers in our schools, work and income New Zealand staff, housing New Zealand staff, <laughs> Our state and public servants are having to deal with these sorts of problems on a fairly, on fairly common basis. And I wonder what is happening to those workers, police, prison officers, but the rest as well, the other state servants and public servants who are under enormous pressure from government cuts, who are under pressure because the public that they are dealing with are stressed, are unemployed, are struggling to make ends meet. These are things that are making the job a whole lot more difficult. And I just think, when we're talking about legislation like this, we should talk about that context, the real fact that these are the people who are being put under pressure by government policy, who are, in fact, in many cases, having the, the support that they are given, the numbers of staff in their, in their organisations cut. And, of course, we'll all wait to see in the budget what happens in that regard. Going back to the specifics of this bill, as I said, we have no objection to this, but we just think that the government is tinkering around the edges instead of providing evidence-based plans to reduce crime. The Sentencing Act already provides that the court may take into account any aggravating or mitigating factor that it thinks fit, in addition to the specific factors listed in Section 9 of the Act. So in the Sentencing Act, it actually goes through, it lists a whole number of things that are aggravating factors, including things like that the offence involved actual or threatened violence or the actual or threatened use of a weapon and a whole lot of others. It then puts in place a number of mitigating factors. They include things like the age of the offender, whether and when the offender pleaded guilty and the like. So it's already quite a comprehensive list, but what it says is that those things are not the end of the line, that there are nothing in those subsections prevents the court taking into account any other aggravating or mitigating factor that it thinks fit. 
And nothing in subsection 1 or 2 that I've just referred to implies that a factor referred to in those subsections must be given greater weight than any other factor. So, really, there is already the provision for this to happen. So the proposed amendment will not require the, the court to take any specific action in terms of the type or severity of sentence imposed. What it means is that the court will simply be required to take this factor into account, along with the other specified and unspecified aggravating factors, in arriving at the appropriate sentence to be imposed in a particular case. Now, what the um, regulatory impact statement says is that courts would already usually take this into account, that courts have traditionally regarded assaults on law enforcement officers as serious. And, in fact, there's a quote from the High Court describing an attack on a police officer as, I quote, equivalent to an attack on the community because our police are the representatives of the community in the matter of law and order in our society. They are society's front line. That was a 1985 court case. So what we're saying is that we'll support this, but we don't really think it'll make a great deal of difference. In fact, what this is is another meaningless piece of law and order legislation from a government which does not seem to have any ideas for reducing crime other than supporting three strikes type legislation from the ACT Party. We are getting sick of seeing ad hoc and piecemeal law and order pieces of legislation from the government that react to particular topical issues without trying to make a coherent whole, without trying to really address the real issue, the spectrum of issues that are so important, the causes of crime, victims' rights, appropriate levels of punishment, appropriate rehabilitation. What are the sorts of things that actually lead to the, the increase in violent crime in our society? Issues around poverty, issues around parenting, issues around alcohol and drugs. What about unemployment? What about the fact that so many people are struggling to make ends meet? None of these things that are actually really important factors in driving crime seem to get anywhere near the government's radar. And what instead the government seems so willing to do is just to have another very brief uh, headline-grabbing piece of law and order legislation to say you're being tough on criminals and responding to law and order issues, but in fact all it is is fluff. I call Jackie.